Ahead on Newswatch, dozens of Democrats protesting Donald Trump's inauguration. Is it just sour grapes over the election, or do they have a point? Plus, it is called POTUS Shield. Meet the new network of prophets, pastors, and other Christian leaders praying for Donald Trump and all of our leaders. And the story of God will hear from Morgan Freeman on the new season of his show about faith around the world. Thanks for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. In just a matter of days, President-elect Donald Trump will be sworn in as the 45th president of the United States. A number of protests are expected, and more than two dozen Democratic lawmakers won't be attending the ceremony. Charlene Aaron has the story. Some of the Democrats who won't be attending say they don't agree with the president-elect, and some are unhappy with his response to Congressman John Lewis, after Lewis said he wouldn't attend the inaugural because he considers Trump an illegitimate president due to Russian hacking in the election. I will not be going. People have not forgotten uh, that he attacked a Mexican-American judge, that he attacked a Gold Star family, and now a civil rights icon. I cannot pretend that this is a normal uh, transition of power. But James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, told the Senate Armed Service Committee earlier this month that Russian interference did not change any vote counts. Congressman Lewis also skipped the inauguration of George W. Bush in 2001 because he didn't believe Bush was, in his words, the true elected president. But other congressional Democrats will be attending Trump's swearing in on Friday, like New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, who opposed Trump's nomination of Jeff Sessions as attorney general and opposes Trump's agenda. Booker told USA Today, I respect everybody's choice in this. My personal feeling is this is the peaceful transition of power. And on Martin Luther King Day Monday, Trump met with King's son at Trump Tower, talking about voting rights. Afterward, King was asked about Trump's fallout with Lewis. First of all, I think that in the heat of emotion, a lot of things get said on both sides. And uh, I think that um, at some point, I, I am, as John Lewis and many others are, a bridge builder. The meeting reportedly began with a prayer for healing of the nation. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. CBN's David Brody has learned Donald Trump will be sworn in using the Bible of his childhood. He's owned it for more than 60 years. He'll also be using the famous Lincoln Bible as well. Police in Istanbul have arrested the man believed to be the gunman who killed 39 people in an attack on a nightclub in Istanbul during New Year's celebrations. The suspect was caught in a special operations raid. Government officials say the suspect's fingerprints match the attackers. The Islamic group has claimed responsibility for the nightclub massacre, saying the attack was, a, was in response to the Turkish military operations in northern Syria. Three suicide bombers linked to Boko Haram, including a 12-year-old girl, blew themselves up Monday at Nigeria's Northeastern University in Maguri. They killed a professor and another child. One student said the first blast ripped through the mosque where professors were praying and a second bomb detonated at the entrance of the gate. This is the first Boko Haram attack on the school. The Islamic group has killed more than 20,000 people. Some of the body of Christ believe the upcoming government transition in Washington could lead to a time of spiritual reformation as well. And as Paul Strand reports, they recently organized to come to the nation's capital to do their part in seeking God for that very thing. POTUS, P-O-T-U-S, is short for President of the United States, and a new network of prophets, pastors, and other Christians has formed to create what they're calling POTUS Shield, to put a shield of prayer around the new president and the government. They came together in Washington to discern, then declare and decree the strategies of God for America. First all together in a huge gathering at the National Press Club, and then in discreet small groups outside places like the Supreme Court. Charisma senior editor Jennifer LeClaire prayed with one such group. 
The morning of the election, the Holy Spirit told me today on election day, a kingdom will be toppled. And we saw that happen. I saw it before my eyes. And when I looked at the map, when I woke up in the morning, you know, the map was almost all red. And I'm like, I'm thinking, this is the, this is a parabolic of the blood of Jesus. You know, people want to say, oh, America is going to be judged and America is going to hell in a handbasket. Well, the, the blood of Jesus is sufficient for the sins of America. Shield participants aren't gathering just to gather. They mean to create a serious prophetic and prayer shield over the parts of government like the White House, Congress, and the Supreme Court. And they mean to be serious spiritual partners to this secular government. Mark Gonzalez believes this could bring about a great awakening and even the, reformation. The, you know, the future of America is literally in the hands of the church uh, in this hour. God has given us an opportunity, a reprieve, so to speak, uh, to really engage like we've never engaged and allow us to begin to shift this country through the power of prayer, fasting and seeking God, and then uh, at the same time engaging like we've never engaged with our civic responsibilities. The Lord told me he's releasing the angels of transition and they're going to help transition the government into uh, the what we've all been praying for. So our prayers are so important right now. Right now is not the time to stop praying. It's the time to pull our, our boots up, pull, roll our sleeves up and work harder than ever before. No matter how small you are, you're important. And I felt like God was really saying, you know, I'm going to call my people who are marked by my name to come and repent on the sins of this nation. But more importantly, then I'm going to turn that and I'm going to heal your land. LeClaire sees Trump as a major change agent. He's going to turn the tables on the economy. We're already seeing strong reports. He's going to turn the tables with Israel. We're already seeing he's standing staunchly with Israel and many other areas. I mean, trade, foreign trade, immigration. There's so many things he has an opportunity to do if the church will stand with him and support him and pray for him. These Christians say if you felt like you've been on the back burner, it's time to let God use you again. He is there with the broken hearted with the humble. He's there with those who said, look, I messed up. I didn't didn't do I didn't fulfill. I didn't whatever. But this is the time he's needing us because we we've not lost our assignment. The assignment is still there. He who calls it, the calling is is without reproach. One reason LeClaire is trusting Trump is because of the counsel he's getting. And if you look at his cabinet, if you look at his advisors, it's so many Christians, he has surrounded himself with godly counsel. And the Bible says that blessed are those who do not stand in the counsel of the ungodly. Over and over again, the prophetic voices in POTUS Shield mention that God has given the country a time of reprieve and that Christians in this time must realize how important they are and that their words and deeds can affect the destiny of their nation. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from the Supreme Court. Betsy DeVos faces questions in the Senate today before they take a vote on her confirmation as Secretary of Education. DeVos is a charter school advocate and is expected to push for expanding school choice programs if confirmed as Education Secretary. Committee Chairman Senator Lamar Alexander says DeVos, quote, will work tirelessly to ensure every child has access to a high quality education. The last man to ever stand on the moon has died. Astronaut Gene Cernan described his visit to the moon as gazing back on the earth from God's front porch. I looked over my shoulder and there's the earth. There's reality. There's home. I, I wanted to, I wanted to press the freeze button. I wanted to stop time. I really wanted to reach out Put it in my hand, stick it in my space, and bring it home, and show it to everybody. Cernan was commander of the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. On December 14th of the very same year, he became the last of only a dozen men to walk the moon. He said on the moon he realized there had to be a creator of this universe. Viewing the Earth from that distance convinced him, quote, it's just too beautiful to have happened by accident. He died Monday at age 82 at a Houston hospital following ongoing health issues. Still to come, he says the Holy Spirit held his hand in a communist prison in North Korea. We'll hear from missionary Kenneth Bay and why his testimony is part of Morgan Freeman's television series. The new season of The Story of God kicked off Monday on the National Geographic Channel. Morgan Freeman is back, taking viewers on a journey around the world, exploring different religions and their faithful followers. 
Angela Zatopek spoke with Freeman and the producers for more about this new season. It's a TV series like no other that answers some of humanity's biggest questions. Is there life after death? How do you get to heaven? And where will you go when you die? The Emmy-nominated series, The Story of God, hosted by Morgan Freeman, is back for season two. Almost every faith has a figure that they think was chosen by God. Muslims have Muhammad, Christians have Jesus, Jews have Moses and Abraham. Why do we rally around these chosen ones? And how do they guide our faith? Shattering network viewership records with season one, Freeman is diving even deeper into topics that grip viewers in 171 countries. It confirmed to us that our instinct was right, that people are interested in something that's uplifting and about the connectedness in all of us. Season two explores different major themes of belief systems we see today. The first episode, The Chosen One. I'm setting out to meet chosen people who walk the earth today. We're uh, talking to people who um, have had and are having very interesting experiences. Uh, in this realm. Freeman meets with different people who believe they're called or chosen to share their faith. That includes American missionary Kenneth Bay, who was held captive in a North Korean prison for being a Christian. I knew the risk. I knew that um, they cannot tolerate anything but their own religious system. In prison for two years, Bay shares his encounter with God at his darkest hour. Something happened that I couldn't explain. Suddenly my hand was getting warm, my left hand. So I slowly opened my palm and I saw something sparkling like gold dust. And then this is when I felt that God spoke to me and say, Kenneth, Holy Spirit is holding your hand. He's standing next to you. And do not fear because I am with you. And I felt so peaceful. Yeah. From speaking with him, what would you say stood out to you the most about his story and just the courage he had through the that journey? The uh, equanimity <laughs> with which he uh, spoke about the experience. Uh, it wasn't like, and they did this to me, and they did that. And he says, no, it was kind of like a, just a straightforward narrative. Felt called to do it. Directors aim to inform an and open dialogue between cultures the with the division over religion that we see today. We've seen a lot more when you turn on the news of, of these horrible crimes and, and people acting out with such hate. And you see the passion that people have just through your um, season of, of for what they believe in. Through exploring and oh, meeting yeah. all these different people of different walks. What would you say to, to people that feel that they need to act out with hate against someone else in the name of, of their belief system? It would be good for all of us to learn more about our fellow human beings on the planet, especially those who think differently than us. Catch our next Inside Look with Freeman as this controversial series continues. From Los Angeles, I'm Angela Zatopek for CBN News. A world-renowned cardiologist goes from being a heart doctor to a heart patient. He has what you really need to know to protect your health. The Bible calls the heart the wellspring of life. For Americans, problems with the heart are the number one cause of death. The sad fact is many people simply do not realize they're at risk of heart disease. So in part one of our series, Gordon Robertson shows you what you need to watch out for and exactly how to protect your heart. There's a killer on the prowl in the U.S. today. In the next 60 seconds, another life will be taken. Many people are unaware that they are just one heartbeat away from becoming the next victim. The killer is heart disease. Dr. Chauncey Crandall is a board-certified cardiologist and author of the book, The Simple Heart Cure, 
the 90-day program to stop and reverse heart disease. Dr. Crandall knows very well the destructive effects of heart disease. He sees it every day in the operating room. He never expected at age 48 to come face to face with his own life and death struggle. One day I was at the airport and I lifted my bag off the conveyor belt and I experienced pain in my left shoulder. And as I continued to walk, the pain intensified and then I put my suitcase in my car and the pain went away. The next morning, the nagging pain returned and Dr. Crandall took himself to the emergency room. But I was a cardiologist and I didn't have heart disease in my family. I wasn't a smoker, I wasn't overweight, I carried on an active lifestyle, but I was under a tremendous amount of stress in the operating room. Doctors discovered that one of his coronary arteries was 99% blocked. In just 48 hours, he went from heart doctor to heart patient. And this blockage was right at the beginning of that artery. And when you have a blockage at that site, you usually die. So even a cardiologist can be misled concerning the diagnosis of heart disease. Coronary artery disease is the most common type of heart disease. This year, it will take the lives of more than 370,000 Americans. It can be hidden for years without any warning sign. But it develops over a period of time, and we develop what are called plaques. They're really like blisters that line the wall of the artery, and they rupture. And this will form a blood clot that will cause the heart attack. And what's putting so many of us at risk? It's our lifestyle. The typical American diet is loaded with sugar and filled with salt and trans fats. On top of that, we just aren't very active. Many Americans sit at a desk all day and then go home and sit in front of a screen all evening. And now add in the effects of stress. A survey by the American Psychological Association says more Americans than ever are reporting they are stressed out. If this sounds like your life, you need some changes fast, and you need to be aware of the warning signs of a heart attack. It could be a simply uh, increased fatigue over a period of weeks. It could be a mild pain. It could be a pain of indigestion. It might just be a pain in the shoulder or the neck or the jaw. These are uh, signs and symptoms that often precede heart attacks. If you begin to experience any of these symptoms, don't ignore them. Time is critical. Every second you delay could mean the difference between life or death. Call 911 right away. Don't drive yourself to the hospital. Have an ambulance take you there. Once at the hospital, medical teams will evaluate your condition and take the necessary steps to save your life. We now know that if we can open the artery, the artery that is blocked due to a heart attack, there is a critical period of time so that we can salvage heart muscle. And that critical period is one to six hours. So if you can get to the emergency room, they quickly evaluate you, we can open that artery and save your heart. If you think this is just a problem for middle-aged men, think again. The grim reality is that more women die each year from heart disease and heart attacks than men. Dr. Leslie Cho is the director of the Cleveland Clinic's Women's Cardiovascular Center. She knows that heart disease is something women can't ignore. Women actually have an increased rate of dying from heart disease because they show up to hospitals later with their heart attack. Frequently they think it's something else or they actually have atypical symptoms. The symptoms of a heart attack may be far more subtle in women than men. Chest pain and discomfort are the most common signs for both. However, women are more likely to experience shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, and pain in the back, jaw, or neck. The number one sort of rule I think to go by is if you are not feeling right in terms of chest pressure, shortness of breath, fatigue, it's best to let your doctors figure it out instead of trying to doctor yourself. You should know the risk factors for having a heart attack, smoking, early menopause, 
a family history of heart disease, and high LDL and low HDL cholesterol. If you have any of these, you should work with your doctor. Reducing your weight, getting to ideal body weight, eating a proper diet, having your blood pressure under control, your diabetes under control, having your stress improved, sleeping properly every day. These are all part of the recovery process after having a heart attack. Being a cardiologist is a high stress occupation, but Dr. Crandall says his faith in God gave him the strength he needs to meet those challenges each day. Well, the key part for my recovery in my event was the power of God in my life. I prayed, I went to church, I had a purpose. So heart disease is not a death sentence. It is a diagnosis that can be treated and reversed. That's just part one in our Protect Your Heart series. You can find many more tips to improve your heart health at CBN.com. Stay with us. There's more of CBN Newswatch straight ahead. Time for your Tuesday Tweetable. It is a message I hope will encourage you and then inspire you to share it with others. Consider this, love is more than a word. It is an action that flows best and most beautifully from the inside out. Just reflect on the love of Christ. It took him all the way to Calvary's cross to restore God's relationship with a lost people. With that word, be sure to make this a terrific Tuesday. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. You can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. We'd love to hear what you think about the stories you've seen here. You can do that by emailing us, newswatch at CBN.com, or you can talk to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hope you join us again right here next time. Make this a terrific Tuesday. See you tomorrow.